What's good y'all, it's Jameer Armstrong and welcome back to another video. Now the Air Force, they get a lot of shit for not being the most physically demanding of the branches, right? They're sometimes referred to as the chair force, but hopefully this video does enlighten me and actually dismisses a lot of the ignorant comments that are being made about the Air Force, the chair force, right? Let's see what they have to go through, what challenges and tribulations that they will experience in Air Force boot camp. Without further ado, if you guys are in the Air Force, let me know down below and also so, let's get right into this, boys. Move forward, move forward. This is Air Force Boot Camp. Before they joined the United States Air Force or Space Force, all trainees must graduate from the Air Force's seven and a half week basic military training program seven and a half weeks basic military training. So that's one difference between the Air Force and the Navy. Ours is 10 weeks. As far as I'm concerned, I went through a 10 week boot camp. Theirs is seven and a half. Known as BMT. Our mission is to motivate, train, and inspire the next generation of airmen to deliver 21st century air power. Hut, 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 hut. Training happens here at Lackland Air Force Base, located just 10 miles outside of downtown San Antonio, Texas. On a sweltering week in August, Insider spent four days observing different squadrons at various stages of training. Whenever I said I was going to Air Force, everybody was like, oh, the Chair Force, like, basic's gonna be nothing. And I was sitting there thinking, man, I should have went another route. This is gonna be way too easy. You're wearing your failure all over your face! And I could not have been more wrong. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video, to kind of kind of bring light to how much the, that, the, that the, the recruits in Air Force Boot Camp go through. And hopefully this, uh, <laughs> this this dismisses a lot of the stigmas and stereotypes that the airmen have to go through, through their long and uh, arduous and strenuous boot camp. On day one, new trainees arrive on a bus from the San Antonio airport. Some of these kids Just come like here us. never having left home, you know, no job experience. But not long after they leave here, they're going to be given a job and a task and expected to perform that task with no supervision. They hug your back, no falls out. That's all this comes. About 35,000 so like trainees right. graduate from BMT each year. The average age of a basic trainee here at BMT is 20.6 years old. What that means is wow. they don't remember a time when our nation wasn't at war but they raised their hand anyway, and they said they want to serve. All trainees are sorted into smaller groups known as flights. Although training squadrons are composed of both male and female trainees, the flights okay. are divided by gender. Flights. During In Navy boot camp, they're referring to their divisions, right? We, call, we called our groups division. They're referring to their group as flight. So that's very interesting. And it's also going to be integrated as well. So you're going to have the male and the female flights. I guess I'm, I'm assuming all in one division. Right now, they're getting the haircuts. Keys does not look like a happy camper. It's, it's definitely a slower pace compared to Navy boot camp. As, as you guys saw my video, it's much faster, especially when they were in the data exchange. Like, go, 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 go. Male trainees receive haircuts. Female trainees must wear their hair in a bun, a ponytail, or okay. up to two braids. So they're already given their cap the from the get-go. Get Females were first allowed to join the Air Force in limited roles in 1948. Hell yeah. And in 1976, began being accepted on an equal basis with males. Today, 20% of the Air Force's active duty service members are female, along with about... And they're the baddest girls of the branches. I don't care, oh. I don't care what y'all say. Air Force women, they got it, bruh. Like, I joined the Navy because I thought the girls were gonna be bad, man. I see some... Oh. Damn, I should've joined. That is a strong 20%. I'm just gonna keep it 100. For some reason, Air Force women, if you guys are watching this, I wanna let y'all know, y'all are the prettiest women of all the branches, right? Uh, y'all are up there with the Marines, but the Marines, they're a little too, uh, they're a little too masculine for me. I don't know what it is, but y'all got it. That was totally off topic. Trainees oh. learn how to line up and march in formation from their Base military movements. training instructor, or MTI. <laughs> which for some can be easier said oh, than done. So they, they, just, they just learned how to do their face There you movements. go, leave it all on the track. Mornings at BMT begin at 0600 with physical training. Five seconds. 
Come on, man, keep going. All right, you're done. All trainees must pass a physical fitness test during the fifth week of their training, which consists of one minute each of push-ups and sit-ups, as well as a timed one and a half mile run. Five, five. Good job, keep going, gentlemen. They kind of flip a switch during PT from MTI to personal trainer. Good job, good run. Like they come in and they really encourage you. If you're struggling, they'll tell you like, hurry up, let's get this done, and they'll do it with you. There you go, burn through this last one. Right, like, like a PRT. PT. It's time for breakfast, known as chow. But meals aren't a time for relaxation. I'm not gonna lie to you, gang. They, they eat kind of right. <laughs> their facility's on point, bro. To announce their flight's arrival to the dining facility. Our pop. Six is prepared to enter the dining facility from the east side. Bring him in to see them. Bring him in to see them. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You got to do the right amount of steps, the right drill movements. You got to say the right words, or you're going to get screamed at. What are you doing? What is happening right here? What the Chow runners who don't follow procedures correctly may face the wrath of the snake pit the area where MTIs sit during meals. You look, stepped out in traffic, and almost got ran over. Wow. Because it was not your turn. There's no explanation for it. Back up. Really, it's an important job <laughs> because you represent your flight. They put people in there. Why did bro say that? It, was it because it was COVID? Like, <laughs> why did you tell them back up? You look, stepped out in traffic, and almost got ran over. Because it was not your turn. There's no explanation for it. Back up. Really, it's an important <laughs> job because you represent your flight. They put people in there who got confident issues, you know, to build their confidence. So you're forgetting to do so. This one got you. Stop talking when I'm talking. You got to really be stable to build the... They put people in there who got confident issues, you know, to build their confidence. So you're forgetting to do so. This one got you. Stop talking when I'm talking. Damn, bro. I, I would love to see a recruit talking while RDC's talking, bro. Like, when he just did right there, stop talking when I'm... Like, that is... That's fairly tame. I'm not gonna sit here and act like Navy boot camp was, like, the biggest, the baddest, like, the Marine boot camp, right? This might pick up a little bit, so let me chill. Let me chill. You gotta really be stable to be able to remember everything and then be in that fire and, you know, perform well. After doing it a few times, it get easier. Attention to detail is a critical aspect of BMT, and it starts in the dormitory. Trainees are expected to keep their living areas and uniforms in pristine condition, and both are inspected regularly by their ATIs. There's a plethora of things that they have to make sure are perfect down to the T, and if they aren't, we're gonna let Skitties. them know that this does not meet the standard. They're gonna be expected to correct it. During zero week, each trainee is assigned a rifle, which they learn to care for. We, we don't carry rifles in Navy boot camp. When I was in boot camp, all we did was handle the M9 pistol. And we did assembly, disassembly of the gun, and also live fire as well. We didn't handle any rifles, and we certainly didn't house any rifles in the, the compartment. 35% of BMT is classroom instruction. Right now, what you're gonna do is go to the high kneeling position. Trainees learn the basics of how to hold their rifles in a variety of different shooting positions. Because we're an expeditionary force, an airman can find themselves in any location around the world really at a moment's notice. So we have to maintain our qualifications and our service weapon. Hup, 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 hup. Nowhere is attention to detail more apparent than in drill practice. Get your jump. Stay and step. Drill is a lot of precision and discipline incorporated into certain movements in a formation. Hell yeah. I will say during the first couple <gasps> weeks of training, they are drinking from a fire hose. The drill is much more difficult for them because they are having an overload of information being given to them. Up forward, look forward, the ranks. left, right, left. Typically after the second or third week of training is when it all starts to make a little bit of sense and around that time is when it looks a lot better. Now nah, this is fire, bro. Okay, here we go. We're about to get active. Training culminates We're active. in week six with an event known as BEAST, which stands for Basic Expeditionary Airman Skills Training. 
Beast puts them through all the things that they have learned in five and a half, six weeks, and we rehearse it, if you will. During Beast Week, trainees live in a simulated... So we don't, um, so wow, so we don't go through like a Beast Week, we don't, um, I'm trying to remember, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't really, we're not that, we're not armed, <laughs> we, so, so to speak, so we don't got the Kevlar, we don't have the... We don't have the helmets or nothing like that. Um, we don't eat MREs. The worst that we're gonna be eating is probably um, the bag nasties. So like like the the sandwiches, as well as other um, undisclosed items in that bag in that brown bag. But nah, these dudes that like they said is it's it's more expeditionary. So um, they're gonna be given certain tools and weapons and all this stuff to. To accommodate for their new lifestyle, which is in the Air Force. So, yeah. But I don't lie, them MREs look kind of fun. In combat environment and are tested on various field training exercises and scenarios. I want their backs to hurt and I want their feet to hurt after that five days of training out in the field because they need to ingrain to them right now the character. What does it take to be our agile airman and our agile guardian in the United States Air Force? Space Force, baby. During combat arms training and maintenance, trainees learn how to handle and fire an M4 carbine. Trainees first learn how to safely load and fire their weapons in the classroom before heading out to the firing range. The line is ready. Fire! Fire! Where they'll fire Threat. weapons from several different positions. Trainees fire a total of 76. Y'all don't understand, bro. When you hold that shit, especially like like standing up, bro, that shit hurts your shoulder a little bit. That shit, you know, you gotta put the gun down for a second. Like, <sighs> Trainees who score 22 or higher qualify Starting as tired. expert. The reload is out with y'all. Everything hey, new. Slap the ping pong paddle, that ball on the side of your gun and shoot. If they lose fundamentals, they get frustrated. They get frustrated, they tend not to qualify. You guys ready? Yes, all right, let's do it again, let's go. But if you keep them motivated, that part will ensure that they either qualify or get that expert. There's a sense of accomplishment that when an airman leaves here that they're they're confident in holding and operating a weapon. Some people come here, they've never touched any weapon of any kind in their Facts. life. So that confidence is important to us. Facts. Trainees don gas masks during seaburn training where they learn how to protect themselves during a chemical, biological, radiological. I wish I took a photo when I was wearing this. We didn't wear this in boot camp, but I had it like when I first got here to Bahrain, they like equip you with this in case of there's like a chemical attack or something like that. Outside in the desert? Oh my God. And the mask is like, ah! Trainees run through a simulated attack and conduct post-attack reconnaissance of their surrounding area. Hell no, nah, leather gloves. Check for damage. I'm as well as any unexploded explosive ordnance. Due to COVID-19 protocols, trainees are not exposed to any dangerous chemicals during BMT, but training that does include exposure is scheduled to return in early 2022. Two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. Uh, I believe it's 97 degrees right now, and the gear that they're wearing adds about 15 degrees of body heat. So ah. it's it's challenging both physically and mentally. I know it's hot, I know it's miserable out here, but you need to make sure you're paying attention. I think it's a unique experience. I remember the first time I put on a gas mask and how cool I thought it was, but there's no doubt that after wearing that gear for a few hours, especially in the Texas heat, they, they probably get tired of it pretty quickly. I like that, to joke that, with some of my students and, and tell them, hey, the best part of Seaburn is returning the gear at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. LDP one. What is LDP one? It's LDP one. Figuring out how to coordinate with your team, that would be the most difficult part, especially in like all that really clunky gear. It's hard to move around. I can't do the heat, bro. And the mask too. And the glasses, like, and the gloves. <laughs> Come on, bro. Get me out of here, bro. Trainees are oh, okay. also trained in the tactical tourniquet. casualty combat care or TCCC, which teaches them how to perform potentially life-saving first aid in combat. Combat lifesaver. Once I go through once, I'm gonna go back the opposite direction. That's what's gonna create that direct pressure. The trainees learn how to properly apply tourniquets, as well as how to evacuate a wounded airman to safety. 
skills they'll need to know when it comes to the culminating event of Beast Week, simply known as the Village. The trainee's mission is to infiltrate the village and rescue an injured airman located somewhere inside. But the sounds of gunfire and explosives along with the presence of role players acting as opposing forces and innocent bystanders make for a stressful environment. We all kind of rushed in and then didn't really know what to do. We were all just kind of like looking around like what the heck is going on? We had a plan and then it completely fell apart. I guarantee the instructors are the bad guys, right? So the instructors, they're gonna be hiding. They know the blind spots. They know the spots of where you can't see them but they can see you, right? Sorry, I just messed that up, but bruh, they probably using paintballs too. Oh my God, bro! Watch this. As soon as we walked through, pretty much it fell apart. Bang, 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 Yo! Oh, that's not fair, but like that's cheating. Bang, 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 bang. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Sorry, y'all. My camera just died, so I'm rocking on my iPhone right now. But hey, we're almost done with the videos. They're in Beast Week right now, so they're about to get into it. Let's go. About what it is that we've taught them and trained them on in a scenario where they're actually under pressure. Put your hands above your head. Put your fingers. Put your feet. Trainees are taught how to defuse situations with opposing forces oh, sir. Oh. and are instructed to use minimal force on those who are non-compliant. What are you doing when they don't comply? Uh. But the stressful uh. environment can cause some trainees to freeze. Okay, can I see? Oh, thank you. Or wow. react. Wow. See, so what y'all what y'all just saw there is just when you're put in a very stressful environment, your brain just shuts off, just shuts down. Like you can't, sometimes you can't compute certain commands and forget all your training. Everything goes out the window. When the guy told the trainee, he says, what are you supposed to do in that hostile situation? He literally cannot grab whatever what was instilled in him all those weeks of training. And then what she did right there, like she just completely froze, like especially in that environment. Like he's like, oh, give me that, give me that. She literally like handed him her weapon. Some of the things that I see most of the time, which is very so not loaded. Okay. to our force, is trainees utilizing deadly force when they're not supposed to be. Why did you shoot me? You have a grenade in your hand and a weapon in your hand, sir. So how did you know it was a grenade? You're that far away, you don't know. And I'm not pointing my weapon at you, why would you shoot me? Obviously, we all know that's against code. It sets us back in a mission that we're trying to accomplish overseas. Bang. Hey, sir. Common mistakes, not forming that 360 degree perimeter. I see that all the time. Hey, wingman. Bang. What are you doing right now? No 360 degree perimeter. I want them to make mistakes. I want them, I want to correct those mistakes and tell them this is why it was a mistake and move forward from it. Y'all are all trained in teacher, we'll see, right? Somebody send this down there and then. Once the trainees reach the injured airmen, they must quickly and safely apply T triple C. Wake up! Calm down and think. Before evacuating them to safety. You guys ready? We're going this way. Let's go. Hey, this is why we train out here. This is why we harp on all of those things that we teach you when you're doing fast and T triple C because this, all of this stuff comes into play whether you're here or downrange and you have to apply real world. Hey, if you shoot somebody out in the desert and they didn't have opportunity, capability, and intent, you're going to Leavenworth. We try and expose the mistakes. That way they can make them here where it's a safe environment and actually leave the village with a different understanding of where they need to work on themselves. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Having survived Beast Week. That shit must have been intense, boys. Chinese returned to base with the toughest week of BMT behind them. Oh. I'm assuming that was like battle stations. So if you are, if you're in the Navy, if you've been to the Navy boot camp, battle stations is like our, our boss level, right? Or, or like if you're in the Marines, the crucible, right? That's their boss level. This is the Air Force's boss level. Peace week and man, that shit ain't tough at all. Plan. <laughs> yeah, they applied all that they learned in training to this final comprehensive test. It just goes to show that throughout all that training and all that learning, when you're it's different when you're in the classroom, but when you're out in the open, when you're in the when you're down range, right? Sometimes you just you just shut down. You just you're like you know I've never been in this situation before. I never it just you just completely shut down. But yeah, um, 
they'll see the graduation, right? By the time they come back from Beast, there's a, a new sense of accomplishment. Friends and family gather to see their new airmen and guardians graduate. Hell yeah. Yes, sir! Look at those unis. In just seven weeks, which is not very long, but it can make such a difference in someone's life. They walk a different way. They talk a different way. The amount of confidence they exude and the, the pride oh, that they yeah. obviously have. I want that. I want that. If y'all have that, please send that to me. What is that? A Space Force Challenge coin? Oh, hell yeah. Damn. That was motherfucker tall. Me cry. After graduating from basic military training, airmen and guardians head to technical school to start the next chapter in their journey in the so U.S. Like Air Force and Space Force. Hell yeah. Those who joke about us being the chair force, I would tell you, well, it's easier to sit in a chair than it is to sit on a rock. We must outthink our enemies every single day and how we fight. Hell what yeah. I would tell those who joke is to stand the post because we have a nation to defend. Hell yeah. You tell them. Yeah. There's some good stuff right there, boys. Hey, y'all. If y'all like this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe. Tell me what you guys want to see next. We got some bangers for you all 2024. And as always, stay classy.